This is an open letter to the CEO of Air Canada. Sir, my name is Len Archibald. I am 75 years old and my wife is 69. On December 20th, we flew from Palm Springs to Calgary on another airline, knowing that we would have to overnight before boarding Air Canada flight AC7223 to Cranbrook, BC, our home on December 21st at 11.15 a.m. On arrival at our hotel the afternoon prior to our flight, my wife tried three times to do an early check-in, but each time a message said our tickets did not qualify for seat assignment. Upon arrival at Calgary Airport at 8.30 a.m. on December 21st, we checked one bag and were told that the flight was overbooked. But we were not told that this would affect us in any way. However, the agent placed a red tag on our check bag that said, Standby. We went to the departure area and waited three hours to board our flight, only to be told shortly before boarding was to commence that we did not have seats, even though we had purchased tickets via Air Miles in July. The Air Canada agent told us only one of us could board the flight unless an individual was willing to give up their seat for which they would be compensated $400 plus have a guaranteed seat on a future flight. The agent asked for volunteers to accept, but this did not, but did not have any luck. We told the agent we were not willing to be separated and we had every right to be on that flight. She said she could get us a, on a later flight to Vancouver, but there were no seats on a connecting flight to Cranbrook that day. A ridiculous offer to begin with. Our only remaining option was to rent a car and drive to Cranbrook some four and a half hours away on roads with hard packed snow and ice because a major winter storm had just passed through on December 19th. The Air Canada agent told us if we chose this option they would compensate us with $400 each in cash or a travel voucher for future use on Air Canada but could not guarantee us two seats on any other flights that day. At this time, we asked if they would cover the cost of a rental car, and she said no. Now the saga gets even more convoluted because when we tried to rent a car, and we tried three different companies, no one wanted to rent a car one way. Finally, one agent told us that if they did rent us a car, the drop-off charges would be $200 Per day. We had no choice, so we decided to travel to our sons in Golden, only two and a half hours away, because the roads would be better. To make a very long story short, here we are in Golden, with no winter clothes, our Christmas gifts are in Cranbrook, and we'll still have to get to Cranbrook. You, sir, are the CEO of a company whose policies seem to have no concern or respect for your customers because you continue to overbook flights even though your own agents have asked you not to do this. I am sure that you have heard there is currently a constitutional challenge against the Canadian Transportation Agency being led by Gabor Lukacs to create a Canadian Traveler's Bill of Rights. Obviously, there is a need for such a bill when Canadian airlines continue policies such as overbooking and bumping. You seem to think that because you compensated us $400 each for our nightmare, that is the end of it. Well, sir, to quote Winston Churchill, this is not the end. It is not even the beginning of the end. However, it is the end of the beginning. It is time for Canadians to say, no more, Mr. Nice Guy. We are mad as hell, and we're not going to take it anymore. I encourage everyone who is watching this video to contact your Member of Parliament and ask them to support the Constitutional Challenge and create a Traveler's Bill of Rights for all Canadians. Thank you for your support.